The content of this video is for educational purposes only. What you do with this information is at your own risk. Thank you for watching. Enjoy. How's it going everyone? Welcome back to another video. In today's video, we're going to be updating our RetroArch to 1.9.0. So let's go ahead and get started. All right, so as I have done before, I have created a pre-configured archive of RetroArch 1.9.0. And it's not that much different from the website version. It's just that I add certain files that help with some cores to run better. I don't know how much I can say on this video without getting in trouble, but I'll be showing them as we go along with this process. Other than that, let's go ahead and continue. In the description down below, there's going to be a link that should say RetroArch 1.9.0. Once you click on the link, it'll take you to the page so you can start the download process. And once you download the zip file, you can have it dragged to the desktop like I have done already. And now we can use our zipping software to extract it. I am using 7-Zip to extract the files, so if you don't have 7-Zip and you want to follow along with me, I'll leave a link in the description down below so that way you can download it for yourself. But now that you have the zip file opened, now we can put our attention on our SD card. So normally I'd say to delete the RetroArch folder and then extract the files. But I know if you follow my videos before, you probably have your ROMs inside your downloads folder. And I know that all the process of putting everything back is such a pain. So if you have anything in your downloads folder, or if you have any like texture packs or anything, you should try and save those as best you can uh, by taking the textures out at least. But as far as the downloads, all you need to do is just highlight all the rest of the other files and um, leave the downloads folder because those are the ROMs. And just go ahead and delete everything. Once you delete all these files, you can now go ahead and uh, go back to the root of your SD card. And now you can go ahead and highlight all the files from the zip file and extract them to the root or this empty space of your SD card. Now it's a lot of files, so it's going to take a while. So I'll come back to you when this is done. All right, so when you start the extraction process, you might get this right here. The destination has two files with the same names. That's probably because these other files that are my zip file has a download folder as well. And that's probably what it's transferring over. But once you um, extracted all the files, we can close out the zip file and take a look inside the RetroArch folder. So now we have everything that my files comes with and you still have your downloads area where you have all your ROMs. Unfortunately, I can't show you where to get the ROMs, but a simple Google search could help you out along the way. But what I did add on this, uh, reconfigured archive is right here. I added a system folder and inside here has this. So I'm not going to say it, but it has a, a, a lot of them to help with a lot of different cores. And if you have any of your own that I do not put inside there, this is where you're going to put all these files in. So that's what I added my pre-configured archives. So it's just pretty much plug and play. I've updated the assets for y'all and the core info files. So the only thing that you probably have to do is um, install a core and uh, I'll get to that when we get to that point but other than that the SD card is set up I went ahead and added a uh, NSP forwarder so if you have gold leaf in your switch or tinfo or any type of title installer you can use that to uh, install this RetroArch folder so that way you can have it on your switch home menu it is preferable to have it on your switch home menu to use the power of the switch instead of homebrew so uh, with that being said, the SD card is now done. You can go ahead and take out the SD card, put it back in your switch, inject your payload, and I'll meet y'all when my switch is on and ready. All right, so here we are in the switch home menu. And if you already have a RetroArch icon like I have right here, you're gonna wanna delete this first. If you don't have it, that's okay. But let's go ahead and delete this first. Now what we need to do is install it. So we can go into our homebrew and use either Tinfoil or Goldleaf or Awu or whichever title installer that you use. I'm going to be using Goldleaf because it's on my SD card already. And here it is, RetroArch NSP. Just follow the instructions, install to SD card, then install. It's very small, so it's going to install really quickly. And just push home, and now you have it right there on your SD card. So you do uh, have other options as well. If it doesn't work for you, that's probably because your patches, your SIG patches are not really up to date or not working correctly. You could probably extract those again 
Alternatively, you can go into uh, the title override where you go into the homebrew without this applet mode and uh, you can go into RetroArch from there. But it is best to use it on your home menu and it's a lot more um, ease of access as well. So hopefully everything went good for you, but you can just go ahead and enter it. And there we go. So it should look like this. And uh, you don't need to do any online update anymore. But if you do want to, you can go to load a core and look at all the cores. See, there's not a lot here this time that I have. You could just uh, install the ones you want. But I try to do as much as I can. That way you don't have to do anything with online and, you know, the risk of ban or anything. So uh, a lot of cores are there. Um, first thing you're going to want to do, I'd suggest, is go all the way down into the settings tab. You see the settings tab right here. Go all the way down to directory and click on it. And this is what we need to just make sure and, and activate it. So you see that it says system slash uh, BIOS. You can click on that. And then you're going to want to click again into this folder. Now you're going to want to go into RetroArch and then go into the system folder and here you're going to want to click on use this directory and it's going to say the same thing system slash files but for some reason some cores don't work unless you do this on the first try so now that that's done um, also if you want to change the screen of your uh, games you can um, go to video then go into i think it's scaling yeah and then aspect ratio has core provided so sometimes your screen will be so tiny you can go here and change it from core provided and then all of your games will be at the size that you want it so for me a comfortable size as a switch 16 by 9 works really well uh, some games might look overly stretched and you might have to go back to the core provided but other than that everything is done and let's go ahead and test it out i'll test out one game and then um, i'll do the outro and at the end of this video, there'll be some more uh, gameplay just to show you what is uh, working or just to show you some games working and give you a little bit more confidence in uh, installing this. So let's go ahead and load a content. Oh, this, so this is where um, also when you um, I mentioned that the downloads folder has the ROMs. So if you go to load content right here, downloads, it's so easy to get to and you'll have all your ROMs that you installed and put in here. there you go it's working just fine um, what you want to do next is um, if you want to get out of the game easier you should be able to just push the plus and minus of the joy cons and it'll take you to this quick menu and here you can either restart the game close your content take a screenshot you know load save states and change uh, latency or add a, a screen overlay so that's uh, pretty much it guys, that's how that works out. Uh, this game's working fine for me. So, of course, let me know if it works for you. Uh, let me know if it doesn't work for you. I'll try my best to help you out in the comments down below. Also, if you want to reach me faster, there is several links in the description down below to different social media sites that you can reach me on. Um, Discord is the most, I guess, uh, the best option because there's more than just me helping out there there's a huge community there and they're willing to help you out so they're great but other than that uh thumbs up if you like this video subscribe is appreciated as well and as always thanks for watching happy gaming and i'll see you on the next one